lights of all of heaven father the glory of your face and i see you shine and reflecting around the sea of glass and i see your face you're beautiful you're beautiful you're beautiful. I see your face. You're beautiful. You're beautiful. You're beautiful. Jesus, come and breathe your breath over us tonight. Come bring your breath over us tonight. Oh, oh, oh. We worship you, Jesus. We worship how we adore you. For thou, O oh Lord, 
are high above all the earth. For thou art exalted far above all gods. For thou, O Lord, art high above all the earth. For thou art exalted far above all gods. Come on, let's exalt him tonight. We exalt Thee, we exalt Thee, we exalt Thee, we exalt Thee. Hush by my way, 
Some of you have been praying uh, this prayer exactly what Moses used to pray. Show me your glory. If I have found favor in your eyes, show me your glory. And the way God revealed his glory is by showing him his goodness, letting his goodness to pass him by. In Ephesians chapter 1 verse 6 says, To the praise of God's glorious grace. His glory is seen in His grace that He's given towards us. So, I'm going to pray that the Holy Spirit is going to open your eyes to, to the grace of God over your life. Father, I pray that you would open up our eyes to, to how beautiful your grace has been over our lives. And in, in seeing and beholding your grace, we see and encounter your glory. Come and do a new thing in our hearts tonight, Abba Father. 
Come and reveal your love and to carry to us. Open our eyes, open up our eyes. I just don't want to have a theory of your love. Just don't want to memorize the verses of the Bible, God, and not experience the taste. To take me deeper into your ocean of love tonight. Make your goodness to pass by us. I'm just going to give it another minute for God to do a new thing in you. Just let God do a new thing in you tonight. Let God do a new thing in you. It's okay, you can put your guards down. You don't have to be afraid of what he might find in you. It's okay, it's okay. While I was yet a sinner, he died for me. He died for me. Open up your heart to Jesus tonight. Father, we wait on you tonight. We submit the rest of the time into your hands. Uh, you lead us, you speak to us, you protect us, you guide us, help us to be sensitive to your voice. Pray that you would breathe your breath over everything that is going to be shared tonight in your word. Let the seed of your word bear fruit, Father. Pray. Amen. 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 Oh, thanks for joining in tonight. Uh, it's good to have you all. Um, it's wonderful to see you all once again. Um, hope you guys are doing well. Uh, thanks, thanks guys for taking your time out on a Friday night and joining us. It's wonderful. It's, it's awesome, awesome to see you guys joining. Okay. All right. Um, so we've been doing the series. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to keep this really short because uh, we're running out of time. Um, we've been doing the series on uh, laying the axe to the root uh, on f uh, this month on one of the APC's publications called Laying the Axe to the Root on uh, Self, Jealousy, Pride, and Lust. Uh, in the last two weeks, we've covered uh, how, do you how do you uh, lay the axe to the root of self, me, you know, it's all about me and whatnot. And then last week, JP did a, a spoke on uh, laying the axe to the root of jealousy. Um, how we can be so damaging, right? And uh, 
Um, so today we'll be uh, discussing, um, we're hearing about uh, laying the axe to the root of pride. Okay, uh, uh, I said I want to keep this short. Uh, I can just say you know, pride is not good for you. It's very bad for you. Okay, session over. Let's go home. Uh, yeah, really, session over. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, okay, one second. Hey, um, so let's just, uh, you know, I want to just ask, uh, start off by just asking you all uh, about uh, what is your, uh, what would be your understanding or a definition of pride? I don't know, Pastor, I've never been proud in my life. <laughs> yeah, let me know. In the chat section, yeah. Yeah, of course. Okay. Thanks, Sharon. Arrogance, okay. Self-obsessed feeling of always being right. Mm. Letting something not of God define you. Being full of yourself. High opinion of myself, desire of self-glorification, self-posting, doesn't want to be corrected. Yeah, we are getting closer and closer in finishing the session tonight. <laughs> I am better versus I am. Self-righteousness. Mm. Okay, awesome. A sense of a sense or belief of achievement on one's own abilities and not attributing it to God's grace. Epic, epic. Come on, Sandhya, come on. Preach it, sister, preach it. Right, okay, um, so let's move on uh, because uh, I'm gonna try and cover uh, as much as possible. I just don't wanna dump all the information on you. I'll share the, uh, my notes uh, with you guys, okay? Um, so um, I'm just putting something in the chat section. Um, so everything that you all have said is right and so that's what the dictionary also seems to say. Uh, it says pride is simply defined as arrogance, haughtiness, uh, self-exaltation, self-importance, boasting, indulging in self-glorification yeah. and is an attitude that makes us think we are superior than others. Okay, exactly what everybody shared. All right. Uh, but uh, let's dig just a little deeper, uh, just so we can understand, okay? There are two kinds of uh, pride, however, okay? Uh, so one, one is what is called as the hubristic pride, and the other one is known as the authentic pride, okay? Just follow with, uh, with the notes on the chat, like as I'm just putting, posting it up there, uh, you know. Um, so one is the hubristic pride and the other is the authentic pride. So, okay, so just to talk first about the authentic pride is uh, it's a good kind of pride. Of, you know, when we say things like I'm proud to be an Indian, uh, I'm proud of my team. Uh, I want to make my parents proud. Hence, I will work hard. Um, it is what motivates us to uh, work hard and uh, achieve. Right. It's about uh, self-confidence has an attitude of uh, a can do attitude, I can do this, okay? Uh, it's the opposite of uh, coveting. So it does not covet uh, a, another person's uh, or their own success. They like to share it, okay? They have a desire to share their success. Uh, you know, unlike it's just mine, 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 no, okay? So that's the authentic uh, pride. Uh, the other one, which uh, hubristic pride is the problematic one. And that's what we will be talking about uh, tonight, okay? Most of it. Uh, you know, that's the pride that uh, really is, uh, it's all about, uh, like you'll say, you know, arrogance and uh, egotism and uh, I am the greatest, I am better than everybody else, I deserve more than others, you know, I worked hard, I studied all night, what is this, why does she get the first rank and not me, you know. <laughs> uh, <yeah>. Okay. <laughs> 
it's linked uh, this kind of this pride that we're talking about tonight it's linked with insecurity because insecurity is the big part of what drives this hubristic pride or in other words just negative pride okay uh, because it's uh, uh, it's an it's a it's almost like a shortcut uh, to achieve something because you know authentic versus the negative so uh, if you have your bibles with you i have asked you all to keep your bibles handy um, uh, we, can we turn to first uh, john chapter 2 verse 16 or you can keep your eyes on the chat uh, i pasted it over there okay first john chapter 2 verse 16 uh, it says for all that is in the world okay for all that is in the world the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the father but is of the world okay the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes and the pride of life okay so that means uh, there is a way uh, there's, uh, there's there's a, there's a pride of life okay uh, and if you if you see in all the world system uh, the world considers it as normal for people to think highly of oneself and uh, uh, to think uh, highly of uh, certain things or whatever it actually in fact it encourages uh, a prideful attitude uh, you know with statements like look what i've accomplished you know it's all about achievements and accomplishments and it's all normal right um, now again be uh, you know bear in mind this is all about, uh, i'm talking about coming from a very negative heart intention motive everything right uh, it's it's the way one person lives their life pride of life it's, it's it becomes a way of life uh, for the world okay that's it's like it's okay it's, it's fine right uh, but, uh let's just look at a uh, proverbs chapter 16 verse 5 uh, you know, see what God's view of pride is. And again, guys, see, it's like almost like I'm preaching to the choir. We all know pride is bad. This is bad. Uh, and we've also come across a lot of these uh, uh, Bible verses in our lives. Okay. Um, so if you're, if you're anything like me, born in a Christian family, gone to Sunday school, uh, you know, baptized at a teenage life and all this, what we call as Christianese. Okay. <laughs> Okay, we are so used to uh, these verses, but still, we overlook it. We, you know, we just say, eh, okay, you know, yeah, okay, pride is bad. Okay, it's arrogant. Oh, it's arrogant. Okay. Uh, but then we just move on with life. Okay, but so Proverbs chapter 16, verse 5, it says, Everyone who is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Assuredly, he will not be punished. So, and that word, that abomination, first of all, it was a strong word for me. <laughs> and if God is using that means it must be super strong, okay? Uh, if it's in the Bibles. Uh, it, uh, it, everyone who is proud in the heart is an abomination to the Lord, okay? Uh, he will not be punished. Uh, pride makes us feel, like, I think uh, Sandhya who, or someone who said that, right? Pride makes us feel that we can accomplish something on our own, okay? Um, remember that line, okay? Pride makes us feel that we can accomplish something on our own okay uh I'll put that there and uh, we'll come to it and i will we'll connect to that line in, in at a later time okay um so the question is to you guys once again um is pride really that bad it's not a trick question <laughs> Oh, it's not bad. It's bad. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. Uh, I think while we are uh, in the book of Proverbs, can we quickly turn to Proverbs chapter 16, verse 18? Um, thanks. That's what drove Satan out of God's presence. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll stop the recording. Stop the session. <laughs> right. Uh, I said, you know, I'm preaching to the choir. So, uh, Proverbs chapter 16, verse 18. It says, Pride goes before destruction, uh, a haughty spirit uh, before a fall. Okay, pride goes before destruction. Okay, destruction. Uh, 
it's followed by destruction, a haughty spirit before a fall. Um, another scripture. Are you guys ready, right? Okay, okay. Isaiah chapter 2, verse 12. Isaiah chapter 2, verse 12. pasted it in the chat section for us. Uh, this is what it says. The Lord Almighty has a day in store for all the proud and lofty. God, oh boy. It's, it's, uh, it's like saying, you know, every dog has its day. <laughs> it's, okay, God is saying, the Lord Almighty has a day. One day. That day is coming very soon. Okay, uh, have, he has a day in store for the proud and lofty, for all that is exalted, um, and they will be humbled. Mm. Okay, uh, yeah, powerful, powerful verses. Okay, um, and I shared another verse recently when we did the worship series, we spoke about pride very briefly. Uh, there's another verse. Can we, let's go to Proverbs chapter 6, shall we? Let's all go to Proverbs chapter 6. Proverbs chapter 6, verse uh, 16. Uh, Proverbs 6, 16, easy to remember, okay? It says, there are six things the Lord hates, seven that are detestable to him, okay? Uh, six things that the Lord hates, seven that are detestable to him, okay? It's a bunch of lists there, but <laughs> the number one on the list Top of the list, okay, number one, top charts, okay, is haughty eyes, just translate into pride, okay. Um, so it's, this is serious, guys. Now that we've laid the foundation, we've understood what pride is, we've seen the definition of it, we've seen, we've kind of understood the two different kinds of pride, the positive and the negative. We're talking about the negative, and we see, we've seen how the world, uh, you know, looks at pride, and then we're seeing what god's take on it what the bible's take on it is and it is not looking good uh, we all know that right um so before there was a fall of man in the garden of eden there was another fall okay luke chapter 10 verse 18 jesus says that i saw satan fall like lightning okay uh that's that's in in the context of satan being defeated and then we see in Isaiah chapter 14, uh, the famous scriptures, uh, you know, uh, actually, let's go to Isaiah 14. Okay, uh, Isaiah 14, verse 12 onwards. And again, all you Christian people might know this very by heartly. Okay, it says, um, how you have fallen from heaven, O morning star, son of the dawn. You have been cast down to the earth, you who once laid low the nations. You said in your heart, okay, you said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit enthroned on the mount of assembly and at, on the utmost heights of the sacred mountain. I will ascend above the tops of the clouds. I will make myself like the most high. But you are brought down to the grave, to the depths of the pit. Uh, crazy, isn't it? Uh, uh, let's go to another scripture. Let's uh, go to Ezekiel this time. Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 28. Are you guys with me so far? Yeah? Okay, thumbs up. Thumbs down. Uh, Ezekiel 28, and we will come back to this chapter. Uh, once again for another verse, but Ezekiel 28 verse 14 and 15, it says, you were an anointed as a guardian cherub, for so I ordained you. Okay, cherub is a singular for cherubim. Okay, cherubim is plural, cherub is singular. Okay, you were anointed as a guardian cherub. It tells us that uh, this, uh, Lucifer, as we, who, who, who he was, he was, a, he was just not an ordinary angel. Uh, you know, he was a guardian cherub. Uh, he was also an archangel. I mean, if you do uh, study on 
in the angels. Uh, you'll, you'll find out more about him. Uh, you were on the holy mount of God. You walked among the fiery stones. You were blameless in your ways from the day you were created till wickedness was found in you. Let's come down to verse 17. Your heart became proud on account of your beauty and you corrupted your wisdom because of your splendor. So I threw you to the earth. I made a spectacle of you before kings. Wow. Um, see, these Bible verses are enough for us to understand. <laughs> let's not have, you know, let's, let's just get away, you know, from this thing called pride, okay? Uh, but let's just go a little deeper, okay? But see, the issue with this thing called pride that we are talking about, and I'm intentionally talking to Christians, uh, if you're here from another background, uh, just bear with me, but um, unlike the, uh, you know, the lust of the eyes and the lust of flesh, this thing called pride is not very obvious. Okay. It's uh, most of the time, at least in my experience or in my opinion, um, people don't even know that they are proud. <laughs> okay it's 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 a very subtle thing it's uh it's uh yeah it can just you know pass by and you won't even recognize it but it's very dangerous uh so uh having said that because it is so subtle we let's talk about the uh, manifestations of pride okay uh you know how does a person react or act uh those uh you know with uh if the person is being proud or whatever, okay? So I'm just gonna paste it in the chat section and we will be briefly talking about these, okay? So the manifestations, these are the manifestations of pride, okay? Um, number one, it's obstinate or being stubborn, okay? Uh, can we uh, quickly go to Proverbs 29 verse one? Proverbs chapter 29 verse one. It says, uh, whoever remains stiff-necked uh, after many rebukes will suddenly be destroyed with a remedy. Hmm. Okay, um, whoever remains stiff-necked or stubborn. Okay, you remember uh, uh, how God is so angry with the people of Israel in the book of Exodus? Uh, like, uh, you know, I'm not going to come with you or go with you. These are the stiff-necked generation. Okay, it's just stubborn. I want to destroy them all. Uh, you know, he's just pretty uh, mad with them. So uh, uh, being stubborn is one of the manifestations of, of, of pride, okay? The second one is arrogance or overconfidence, okay? Um, arrogance or overconfidence, uh, depending, uh, let's just read Proverbs chapter eight, verse 13. Is anybody there? Proverbs chapter eight, verse 13. And if you're there, uh, just go ahead and read it for us, please. Okay. The fear of the Lord. Go ahead, go ahead. The, law, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogance and the evil way and the perverse mouth I hate. Okay. Thanks. Um, yeah, just, let me just read that again. So to fear the Lord is to hate evil. Okay, if you have an actual Bible, underline it. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Um, I hate pride and arrogance, evil behavior and perverse speech. Okay, uh, another thing about this, uh, again, arrogance or overconfidence. Overconfidence uh, uh, is, again, something that is, it's, can be subtle and not, okay? Uh, in my context, for example, uh, I can be overconfident about leading worship or preparing for a Sunday morning service uh, because I've been leading worship for 15 years or whatever. I can, you know, I've been, I, you know, I know the chords, uh, everything, I know the songs, I, I have them memorized. So I'm not going to practice. I'm not going to memorize, uh, you know? You get what I'm saying, right? So that is being overly confident and dependent on your, on your abilities and not on God. And uh, yeah, so that's, uh, that's another manifestation. Okay, the, uh, the third one is rebellion. Okay, uh, 
it is the uh, rebellion is nothing but it's the unwillingness to submit to god uh, appointed authority okay uh, given uh, uh, either rebel his word uh, his spirit or his or his people okay uh, this is in context to god uh, you know we rebel when we uh, when we don't obey his word or his spirit uh, or the person that he set in authority um, that's another like why should i listen to him you know uh, so what if he's the pastor i'm not <laughs> i know better <laughs> uh, you know etc okay um, the next one is being scornful Okay, are you guys with me? Okay, let's just do a quick recap. Okay, uh, the first manifestation of being pride, a uh, proud, is uh, being stubborn uh, after after many rebukes. Okay, and second one is overconfidence, arrogant. Uh, I know better everything. You know, um, dependent on yourself. You don't need any help. Too proud to take help or ask for help. Uh, you know, and um, also just to add to that, you know, we see that in the in our society also nowadays. Uh, it's it's a picture is painted in a way like about men let's say uh you know uh men uh, you know you you i'm too proud to ask help from a woman you know what i'm saying and vice versa okay yeah let me get to the ladies also it's like no i I've, I've been in, i've been dependent all my life you know how why why should he help me i can stand on my own legs I will take loan also and stuff. <laughs> uh, you know, it's uh, it's too proud to ask for help. Uh, and I, in conclusion, later we'll talk about humility. But it, we'll address, we'll see how um, you have to be strong to be humble. Okay, so remember that. All right, let's move on. Uh, being scornful, the fourth one. Okay, uh, the fourth manifestation of the root of pride is being scornful. Um, so to be scornful is to be mocking or disrespectful. Uh, you know, uh, I am always right. I think uh, one of you shared that, right? Uh, I am always better than you. Okay, uh, Proverbs chapter one, verse 22. The, uh, it says, for scorners delight in their scorning. Uh, they take joy uh, in, in, you know, in bringing people down. Uh, it gives them immense pleasure for some weird reason. Okay, and Proverbs chapter three, Verse 34, Proverbs 3, verse 34. Uh, Surely he scorns the scornful, but gives grace to the humble. Okay. Surely he scorns the scornful, but he gives grace to the humble. Um, it is a warning that God scorns the scorners. Uh, you know, uh, uh, he just can't stand them. Um, and the next one, and here I'd like to dwell on this just a little bit. Um, the next manifestation of pride is self-righteousness and hypocrisy. Okay, this is where the Christians rank number one. Okay. <laughs> uh, if all the Christians in the world lived like Christ lived, the, the whole world will be evangelized by now. Okay. Uh, the reason India is still at 22% Christian is... Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, uh, self-righteousness and hypocrisy it's more of a religious uh, spirit okay uh, uh, James chapter 2 verse 10 uh, it, James chapter 2 verse 10 it says about keeping the uh, uh, it talks about keeping the commandments for whoever keeps the whole law and yet stumbles in one point he has become guilty of all. Okay, let me read that verse again. For whoever keeps the whole law and yet stumbles in one point, he has become guilty of all. Okay, so I'm just going to talk about uh, keeping the commandments here uh, in, in the self-righteousness and hypocrisy section because uh, uh, it's in line when during the days of Jesus, right? He was in constant, constant uh, conflict with the Pharisees and the Sadducees, you know, because they kept uh, finding fault with Jesus's actions and his methods. They kept, they kept questioning his authority, remember? Uh, questioning his authority and, and, um, and uh, yeah. So uh, if we break, uh, uh, can we just quickly go to Exodus chapter 20, if that's okay? Okay, uh, and another person, can you go to Matthew chapter 22? 
please. Okay, um, Sam, can you go to Matthew chapter 22, please? And uh, Jamie, Exodus 20. Can you go to Exodus chapter 20? Uh, verse 2 to 6, can you read that, please? Exodus chapter 20, verses 2. Um, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. For... You shall not make for yourself an idol in the form of anything in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the children of the fathers to the third and the fourth generations of those who hate me. Okay. But showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. Thanks, Jamie. Um, so one of the lines that stands out there is, thou shalt have no other gods beside me. Right? Uh, the other one, Matthew, uh, Sam, can you read Matthew chapter 22, verse 34 to 40? Matthew chapter 22, verses 34 onwards. But when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. Then one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question, testing him and saying, teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? Verse 37, Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Okay. Thanks, Sam. Um, so, uh, I, I mean, another question to you guys is, what differences do you see between uh, these two passages? What differences do you see between these two passages? Because they, are they different? Very different. Okay. Um, but what is it? Okay, fast, fast, fast. We have to. I'm going to close very soon. So. So Jesus is actually quoting from Deuteronomy chapter six, verse five, you know, uh, from, from that verse, love the Lord to God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Okay. But uh, here's the thing. Okay. Another verse that I'd like you to read, um, we Lord, uh, want us to go to one of these uh, difficult books to find. Uh, it's actually not difficult. Levit Leviticus, uh, Leviticus chapter 19. Uh, can someone go to Leviticus chapter 19 quickly and we will close soon. Um, Okay, it's after Genesis and before Revelation. <laughs> hey, Jimmy, are you there? Okay, Leviticus chapter 19, verse 11 to 18. Can you read that, please? Leviticus chapter 19, 19 verses 11 onwards. Yeah, um, to 18. Do not steal, do not lie, do not deceive one another. Do not swear falsely by my name or profane the name of your God. I am the Lord. Do not defraud your neighbor or rob him. Do not hold back the wages of a hired man overnight. Do not curse the deaf or put a stumbling block, stumbling block in front of the blind. But fear your God. I am the Lord. Do not pervert justice. Do not show partiality to the poor or favoritism to the to the great, but judge your neighbor fairly. Do not go about spreading slander among your people. Do not do anything that endangers your neighbor's life. I am the Lord. Do not hate your brother in your heart. Rebuke your neighbor frankly, so you will not share in his guilt. Do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against one of your people, but love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. Hmm. So the last line, he, uh, the last line there is love your neighbor as yourself. Okay. Uh, so when in Matthew chapter 22 and 34 to 40, when, uh, when someone asks Jesus is like, what is the greatest commandment? Why didn't Jesus just list down all these things? All this thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not. Why didn't he, why, why didn't Jesus do that? And all he did was uh, say, love, love God. 
okay, and then uh, love your neighbor as yourself. And he goes on to say that uh, all the other commandments hangs on these two things, okay? So it, like, I feel like Jesus removed the emphasis from the letter of the law and he places the emphasis on the spirit of the law, on the intention behind it, okay? Um, so why, why am I dwelling on this uh, self-righteousness and hypocrisy uh, is, and I'm talking, like I said, I'm talking to the Christians and addressing them is, uh, we think just because we tithe every month, we think just because we go to every Sunday to service on time or late or before time, and just because we go and set up, you know, help in the setup team and the, every other team do everything right, uh, it gives us the right to feel self righteous. And then, therefore, everybody else is not righteous. This fellow comes only at 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock to the service, brother. <laughs> what is this? How will God love him? Self-righteousness, <laughs> uh, you know, um, we need to be careful. We need to be careful. We need to be cautious. We need to be cautious. It's, it's, it's a very powerful manifestation of pride. Uh, and it can, uh, again, it's very subtle. Um, so I just want to pause here and not finish the everything else because of time. Uh, but I want to finish on this. The other, the opposite of pride is humility. Right? And I want to conclude with this uh, and I'll share the notes with you guys. Uh, and one of my favorite topics to speak about and feel like uh, anywhere I'm called to give a sermon, the topic will be uh, the, uh, uh, to share on the holiness and the humility of God. Uh, you know, being almighty, all holy, you know, uh, supreme, um, there is no other God like him. Uh, and yet he stooped down. Uh, and we still don't seem to learn from his example. Uh, we just still don't seem to learn from that example of who, uh, or the example that Jesus set for us. He's I'm talking about God. Nobody elected him to be God. Nobody voted for him to be God. He is God all by himself. Self-sufficient. The Alpha, the Omega. He is eternity. Psalm says, by the blast of his nostrils, he parted the Red Sea. By the word, of his mouth, the stars were made, the heavenly host, by the breath. We are talking about this God who's seated on the throne where the seraphs and the cherubs are scared to even show their faces. There is no one like him. As simple as that. And it's so beautifully uh, put in Philippians chapter 2. Uh, again, all Christians... <laughs> no, this, no, this was um, verse 5 onwards. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus. Okay. <laughs> Who being in very nature God did not consider equality with God something to be grasped but made himself nothing. Taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. He humbled himself. He humbled himself. The world, again, portrays a negative image of humility. If you're humble, that means you're weak. If you're the first person to say, 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 say sorry, you are weak. You have to be strong to be humble. You have to be strong to bend down, to stoop down and pick up that guy from the dirt. 
and I say this all the time, uh, every time I share on is humility, Second Samuel 22, 36, I forget which version in my, in my version it says, he stooped down to make me great. Uh, he stooped down. You have to be strong enough to bend and give your back to someone who can climb on your back and jump the wall. So, um, humility is a positive manifestation. Okay, it's just the other side. And that's what God uh, wants from us. So, uh, I'm going to conclude now. Um, can we just close our eyes, uh, you know, for a minute? Um, and, just, and just ponder and just think. Just take some time. Uh, Take a moment, examine your heart. Um, are there areas of your thought life where you need to ask God for the grace to walk in humility? It takes humility to ask for help even from God, to ask for forgiveness. One of the most bold prayers in the Bible is when David cries out and says, search me and know me and see if there is any wicked ways in me. Some of us are scared about what God might find inside of your heart. As like, you let him in, Jesus, I let you into my heart, but only 50% depth. Because if you go deeper than that, uh, I'm scared what you might find. I think you might, not, you might not like what you might find in the deepest part of my heart. Um, so I'm just going to ask you, I want to encourage you. I just want to urge you, okay? I want to urge you to let Jesus into the most deepest depths of your heart. Are the things that you've been carrying for way too long, I think that's enough. So Father, we are here before you. Father, we ask right now to give us the grace. Lord, the word says you give grace to the humble. So we humble ourselves before you, Jesus. We humble ourselves in your presence, God. Jesus, help us to represent you like the way you presented yourself to us, Father. I pray that you will do a new thing in our hearts tonight, Jesus. Thank you for what you're doing in us. Thank you for what you are going to do through us. I will give you all the glory, honor, power, and praise. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Uh, thanks for joining in. I will uh, share the notes uh, of tonight's session uh, in the WhatsApp groups. Okay. I hope you had a blessed time. Uh, good night, everybody. You guys. Uh, Take care. Good night. Have a good weekend. Enjoy. Stay safe.